Hello, my name is Mistress Blunt, and I am here today with Sir Malice Christian. Would you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Sir Malice Christian, uh, originally born in Long Island. I'm currently living in New York City now, um, ex-Marine, USMC, um, 1141, generator operator, generator mechanic. Um, what else could I say? I'm a pro-dom in New York City, and hello, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm so excited to chat with you. I am such a fan of the content that you make. I my, my confession is that I largely watch male leather daddy porn as my like as my go to and just like the aesthetic that you have in so much of your content is just like oh it's like chef's kiss it's so so good um and so i'm i'm just super excited to chat with you a little bit about your work as a male dom um cuz most most of my friends are femdoms um so i'm and i'm i know we've talked a little bit about this about like community in those spaces. So I was wondering if you would talk a little bit about what it's like being a male dom in the city. Um, like you said, it's predominantly uh, femdoms. Uh, I believe from my experience in New York City, like I've tried to, so I came into this with those same inspirations of like 70s, 80s porn stars and like Tom of Finland images and stuff like that. Um, so like I came into this only with those sort of things. I didn't come into this having a mentor, but like just chatting amongst male doms and female doms in New York City, I realized that um, mentoring is a good thing. And I see all the positive things that come from having a mentor and how well you learn to create your own space. Yeah. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't come into this with uh, that privilege. I mean, not privilege. It can be a um, with to that have, like, uh, community in that way. That that like, gift, right? I didn't come into this with that gift. Uh, so um, I had to create it myself, which was kind of fun. It was a it's a little nerve wracking, but it's fun. Um, but I also am surrounded by people like you and uh, Troy Orleans and some other people who've reached out to me that I communicate with back and forth. I can, op I feel open to ask questions from these people. Um, and I think they are very good at what they do. They're like top tier at what they do. So it's pretty cool. I like yeah. it. I love the community. Yeah, I feel the same way. And I feel like something that I, admire about you and your work is that you're always learning um and we were just talking about this just a second ago but you were talking about um your rope bunny and I feel like part of being a good dom is practicing both like is always learning and like never feeling like you're done learning like there's never a point where it's like I know everything I need to know because it's like you can always learn more you can always like finesse your craft a little bit better and like sure i might be like oh like i'm not really in like i might learn about myself like oh you know what i'm not really interested in xyz so i'm not going to put my energy there but i really want to get better at this and i've been seeing a lot of your bondage photos and videos that you've been doing and i'm i'm like really into them so i'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what it's been like um refining your rope bondage in shibari craft um it's been a journey it's been pretty cool again that is something like so like back when i was like in high school i was like surfing the computer for like i don't know what i was looking for but i just like end up in like the fashion section and i saw like this uh spring summer collection that someone did of macrame and i was like i would love to do something like that I could just get lost in it. And like, it's just like a puzzle and I could just like totally, totally get lost in it. Um, over the years, my artistic expression has manifested through different things. Uh, sometimes like woodcraft, sometimes like uh, uh, drawing. I used to be like really good at drawing, but then after the military, I kind of like didn't have the patience to sit down and draw anymore. But it's manifested now in through bondage. But then it has its duality because it's a sexual pleasure and it's also an artistic pleasure. I, I love um, finding that space where they intersect. 
Yes, that hybrid. Yes. <laughs> um, so um, I have a little bit of both. And then I like bringing that to uh, my fan sites or to Instagram. Um, Instagram just started out with me just like being representation, honestly, um, because I didn't see too many men of color in New York City doing BDSM, but I knew that I was interested in it through uh, different experiences and set through sex work. Yeah. It's funny you say macrame was your like into bondage because I definitely think of mine as making friendship bracelets. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, lanyard was, too. Oh, yeah, lanyard. I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, I can do a little bit of this. Like, this is not traditional shabari, but like, this is what my background is in. Is I didn't know what I was doing at the time. And I was so hooked to it. Yeah. Like, my teacher, my English teacher, Mr. Hyde, would come by. And I'm like, over here, like, trying to stitch this thing to my book bag. So I had like a bunch of these things uh, hanging from my book bag. And he's like, this is what you're doing over here? And then he went to go snatch the, the lanyard and he's just pulling like string after string after string. The class started laughing. So I got put out for that. And then he was like, <laughs> if you come back to my class, you can't be doing this. I was like, all right, I'll put it away. <laughs> and and Man, here it is, yeah. like part of your career. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, that's so fun. And so you also have a, a rope bunny that you practice and tie and suspend in these really beautiful ways. <laughs> yeah, Ro Bunny is pretty special. Um, I actually met him on a dating app and because I'm pretty honest with who I am on the dating apps. Yeah. So like, if you're gonna come to me, then you're gonna get this experience, right? And then I can like better myself and get more experience by doing it this way. Um, <clears throat> so he came to me and then I suspended him for his first time. Like I had like a week before that had my first um, suspension experience, like suspended somebody like two times. I had to do it two times before it was like, I knew what I was doing. So um, the te my teacher, uh, Bob, Men in Rope on Instagram, he, um, he's in New Jersey and he, he showed me, he, had, he gave us a private session, me and my, other friend who is into bondage he gave us a private session and then I suspended him and then I suspended the bunny like a week later it was a, it was my first suspension on my own without someone watching and it was his first suspension period so it was like really good that's so exciting how did it feel to like like it's like you're it's like magic it's like you're making somebody fly for you how does that feel to like be able to do that safely on your own um it was satisfying honestly it was really satisfying. But then all I could think about was like, how do I get my lines clean? I want my lines <laughs> to look like that guy's over there. So it just keeps on like, you know, you keep on refining it and making things more suitable to how you want to see your work. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely think of rope bondage as an art and like being able to like, like perfect the lines and making it like nice and clean and like doing your own your own thing with it mm -hmm. is such a beautiful artistic practice and I think um it's like you're like learning from like masters of a craft and then you're able to put your own spin on it so like that it becomes yours is something that I think I really respect about rope artists um with their with their shibari work is really amazing I've always been into um more like decorative bondage and body harnesses because I I grew up in like a leather household where the submissives were supposed to be doing work <laughs> and right. I love service submission so like having someone in um a body harness for me was like a really hot way where you're where they're still able to like use their hands <laughs> um so it comes from a selfish place for me that I like my submissives to be useful but I definitely um, want to like continue to learn more about bondage. I think right. for me, it's also somewhat like, I'm like, you're gonna stay still because I tell you to stay still. That's how <laughs> and, it started for me. And, yeah, and bondage can only, I think bondage can add to that. But um, I personally prefer to play with people who will stay still regardless of whether or not they're, they're Right, I don't wanna have to exert all this extra energy. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm like, no, just just do what I say and we'll we'll be good. <laughs> right. We're trying to keep this safe, sane, and consensual. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's so fun. And it's so fun to be able to have someone to like continue to explore that with. Um, yeah. I so that's what me and Bunny, where me and Bunny are right now. We're like exploring. So now we're refining like the protocols and the rituals. Like we're trying to come up with the perfect ritual that feels natural for us that he does before to like get him into the, yeah. the rope headspace. Um, something that I like that shows like some sort of communication between us, unspoken communication, yeah. because we got a lot of it. We just gotta find what works for us to display. Um, so yeah, that's where we are right now. That's awesome. I, I feel like too, like it's learning how to tie someone up as a dom is a skill, but like being a good rope bottom is also a skill that you can like learn a lot about and like being able to like communicate your boundaries and where you're at and like knowing what's sustainable for you and like also knowing who to play with and who knows. Yes, not. I tip my hat to my rope bunny because he really like sometimes I can be practicing and I'll put him in a bad predicament, but we always do these check-ins. Our check-ins are pretty much, I ask him, are you okay? The safe word is red. I use the basics for right now. The safe word is red. Uh, then you have yellow to slow down. And then you've got green. If I asked if you're okay and you don't really want to be verbal, just be like green, right? Yeah. Um, but, um, and then if the, he's un uncomfortable, then I ask him, where is the pressure at? Where's yeah. the most pressure? And then he tells me where the most pressure is. This also tells me how I can modify it to be yeah. more sustainable for him in the next go round. So this is how it develops. And it's just like uh, fine tuning like little things yeah, over and over again. communication is so helpful. And then I ask him if he tells me that it's like pretty excruciating, that, that there's some sort of uh, uh, pressure, then I ask on a one to one 10, he'll tell me like uh, uh, three. And then I'm like, are you being honest with me? Or are you just trying to push through it? Cause I need to know if you're just trying to push through it, that's such a hard part of it. I like, so especially with more like submissive oriented um, bottoms, I've noticed the like, I really want to make like, if your arm goes numb, I need to know. No, like, just right? I don't want you to know. And you're in a hot scene and like, you're just waiting. You're like, no, 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 it's okay. I, I like really want to finish. Like, I'm like, I don't want to cause you. That puts me in a shitty position right. of, like potentially causing nerve damage. So yeah, having that type of communication, I think is really important and being able yes. to like change and adapt the rope. I found it like really important to be able to change and adapt the rope. So like the scene doesn't necessarily need to end if like right. something mm -hmm. like the pressure is wrong or like a not like in an uncomfortable spot, um, which I think can help make the scene like, which also helps the submissive articulate what's going on for them if they know that they want to continue and that it won't mean like, okay, everything has to stop and change. Right. Right. Um, I like making the content because it helps me to prepare these things as a scene, as I'm putting on a show. So you always have, at a show, you always have your first, second, and third choices, right? So if this doesn't work and you know, I can't get you up high, then maybe I can get you low and then work you up higher, maybe not as high as I wanted to, but a little bit higher. But then that's also helping me to have like diversity with my play. I'm starting to get into like more floor work as opposed to like, I do a lot of suspensions. I'm just like so turned on by suspensions <laughs> and inversions and stuff like that. Like I'm just really so turned on. In the movie, when the person is like, packed up, tied up like a piece of meat, upside down, hanging from a hook. And they're like, just got him on the, the rotator, the rotating thing. I'm just like, yes, this is like a good movie. <laughs> this is a good movie. <laughs> if they're upside down like a piece of meat, this is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, just like a hook right through them. I, lo I love that. Um... Yeah, so I'm just working on more diversity and um, playing with more things. That's awesome. Showing more poses with the uh, with my buddy and uh, my work and stuff like that. Having more variety, getting things cleaner, fine tuning. 
Yeah, it's nice to be able to have someone to like continue that. It's like both your relationship and then also like your relationship with rope and, and bondage. Um, another thing that I'm a huge fan of yours for is how much it seems like you love foot fetish. Like, I feel like I see people like sex workers and doms and dominatrices like talking about foot fetish, but like, it's rare that I see someone who it looks like it's what they like really like. So I was wondering, no, yes. do you have a foot fetish? And if so- I do, I, I like my feet being massaged and played with and sucked on. And I like the other way around too. Yeah. So I'm um, equal opportunity for both sides. <laughs> He's just got to have nice feet, attractive feet. What what makes a foot attractive? Oh my God, the arches, the toenail beds, um, the cuticles, how well they take care of them, how soft they are. Oh man, the arches, the <laughs> arches are important. The arches, I heard you mention that one. Yeah, got some nice, nice arches. Uh, I mean, flat feet can be sexy too, but the arches are amazing. Yeah, you can still point flat feet. Yeah, yeah you can. A little, a little art. Um, do you get pedicures? I do. Every two weeks. My, 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 uh, foot, my nail technician is, she's my sister. <laughs> she's like, brother, you here? I'm like, yes, I'm here. She was like, manicure, pedicure? I'm like, yes, let's go. She's like, gel? I'm like, yes. <laughs> she's like, okay. I love that. Do you yeah, it's like it's a good it? moment for you to like relax and like let somebody else take care of you and i mean it's not like too much money yeah i mean it's an investment but i kind of like my feet to be prepared for the summer and spring <laughs> yeah and for mouths <laughs> yeah definitely that too i don't want to yeah. be putting my foot in somebody else's mouth and i'm not taking care of them yeah i think um foot care is important and it it's like it's just I also have a foot fetish largely on the receiving end, but like I, I know a good foot when I see one and I will, I will call it out. Um, my, my favorite thing is when other doms compliment my feet. I'm like, oh, oh my God, thank you. Like, <laughs> so sweet. thank you for noticing. Those are my money makers. <laughs> for real. <laughs> they do me good. Um, but yeah, like I, I think foot fetish is so interesting because it's like such like a physical, um, like the height, I think like the height difference in playing with like standing above someone and like literally having someone down at your feet. I think that can be a really hot thing. And then mm -hmm. also when like I have like a foot and boot fetish, then you're down there by like an erogenous zone for me, which is just like automatically a turn on. So there's the play of power dynamics of having someone lower than me, like maybe like one of my feet on their head. And then there's also the fact that like, I'm about to have my feet worshiped and I'm fucking excited. Right. I mean, you, you get the, 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 the excitement of like, are they good at massaging or sucking or whatever they're about to do? And then they start doing it and you're just like, oh, they're good. Yeah. A good <laughs> foot slut learns about massage. Cause I, I have some foot sluts who are, it's very much like I I forgive the fact that they're not good at massaging because they get so high from my feet Blame, being yes. near them that they look totally useless and I'm like okay this is hot in its own way but like and like I'm I'm turned on and aroused but like you should fucking learn how to massage <laughs> oh I'm I'm into teaching I took yeah, massage therapy exactly. I took massage therapy I'm totally into teaching Fuck yeah. I'm totally into it. I'm like definitely getting into the command and response stuff. Yeah. I like when I like being able to to teach them and, and subs who want to learn too, like how to bring pleasure because that's a big turn on. Yeah. Feet are such like an, an erogenous zone. I don't know how else to say it for me. And like there's so many nerves in a feet and they're so sensitive. They can kind of be ticklish or it can like just like shoot right up into my cunt and I'm like wow like that's crazy right. and, like, I, I can come from foot fetish sessions which is something like I both love and hate because I'm like oh god damn it I'm too easy <laughs> 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 I gotta make it harder for them but it's like when you're really enjoying it like yeah I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not <laughs> not right yeah exactly you kind of can't honestly 
You really <laughs> yeah, there's no it. hiding that. <laughs> um, yeah, what, well, what is your favorite part about a foot slut or like a foot fetish session? Um, I think the chemistry is like what I really get off on. Like somebody just being so comfortable down there and like getting lost in it. Like they're really comfortable and really want to be there. And they kind of gave you control over what you can do or what you can't do, um, you know, during this session. Uh, I just think the chemistry, the energy that is given and received on my end. So that's yeah. like the best part for me. That makes sense. So whatever they do down there, whether they're good at massaging, like you said, I can kind of overlook it. <laughs> because they're down there just going in. Oh my God. But I'm looking for one that knows how to do pedicures. I don't gotta go to Yes. <laughs> we were training. I was hosting these these leather socials and there were two subs in training learning to do pedicures. And it's such a good skill set. I'm gonna say this louder so my submissive in the background can hear. <laughs> Learning to do nails is a good skill set. <laughs> right. Um, but it, it's like such a sweet act of service too, to be able to do that for someone, especially someone who like has that fetish. It's like, it's like, right, you have a boot fetish. A boot black is an amazing person to like bring into into your life to care for your boots in this in like these highly charged like talisman like objects of power and I think feet kind of are that too and I think for me my favorite part is like watching someone fall into subspace just from like my foot being near their face and that power and I think I like to think of people's fetishes or like what they're into as a way into their brain to play with DS. And like, I'm very, I'm very clear about this in my, like, I don't do straight fetish sessions unless like people are interested in a DS component. Um, and what people will do to be close, what foot fetishists will do to be close to your feet. I just think it's a very powerful tool to play with in a DS relationship. Right. Yeah, I definitely can agree with that. <laughs> I can definitely agree with that wholeheartedly. Whole footedly. <laughs> what, Whole footedly, yes. What will a foot fetishist do for feet is a is a good game. <laughs> it is. What will you do? Oh, I kind of like the game from um your last uh or maybe not the last one. Um the one that I tuned in, you guys had the the cage creature and oh, then yeah. you guys played games with us that was so <laughs> that fun. was really yeah. good for her to yeah. figure out uh which uh story goes with which person yeah that was really fun so we, we've been doing these leather socials throughout the pandemic we took a little pause because i think we were all a little bit fat fatigued but it was really fun and we had like kind of like a game show where our cage creature had to guess the secrets of everyone in the Zoom room chat, all of their kinky and dirty secrets, um, which was very fun. And then we had like this like carnival spinning wheel that we would spin and then that those would be her punishments or rewards. My favorite was checking tennis balls at her. I'd never done that before. And that was very good <laughs> for me. <laughs> of course, in mommy's basement. <laughs> yes, right. That was really nice. It was a nice setup. It was really fun from beginning to end. Everybody took a piece of like information about everybody else back with them because everybody had to post in the comment section with they their little secret. Yeah. Did you enter any secrets? Um, I put the that I was in the military and they had to figure that out. And then I put um I can't remember the second one. I did two. So you have a foot fetish? <laughs> Uh, that's that definitely not a secret <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely not a secret you will definitely see feet in my story on instagram i know I, you have a, it's like i love your aesthetic and then i love your your eye for feet you're just like constantly what's your what's your instagram handle um malice of ny malice of ny yeah like your story is one of my favorite places it's just like such a good curation of like 
it's like that Tama Finland inspired look with lots of feet. It's amazing. <laughs> very good. A very good curation of feet. Uh, I try. I try to keep the people entertained, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have too many, like, uh, of course, we have doms who um, post their content and they don't post anybody else's content. And then you have some people who share other people's content or other inspiring content. I like to try to post something that's either going to inspire you here or physically, like, you know, in some sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> or everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. For I everybody. I try to keep it like, cause I got a lot of sexy followers and it's beautiful to like wake up and kind of like open Instagram for a second. That's what I need to work on. Not giving Instagram too much of my time. Though. Yes. Getting That's sucked into it. A cruel mistress. <laughs> <laughs> she, she takes up too much time. I made um, a custom, a fake custom video for social media algorithms. I don't know if you saw that. I was like, oh, you're such an insatiable little slut, aren't you? Always wanting to be fed, always wanting more. It's never enough for you because they just want all of your time. They want to yeah. like take all of your time. So I think boundaries are good for that. A little phone bondage. I like to give- You post this in your uh, feed or in the story? This was on Twitter because I was nervous. It was too sexy for- Okay, cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like giving submissives airplane mode bondage where they have to put their phones on airplane mode. <laughs> oh no, once you walk in the door, your phone goes away. Turn yeah. it off. You don't really need it. Are you, is there any meetings happening at this time during, during this session? No, no meetings. Okay, do you need to speak to your children? No, do you need to speak to your spouse? No, okay. So you don't need to speak to anybody. Nobody is important right now. Yeah. Put that away. And yeah. make sure you undress right there by the door. Yeah. It's so interesting. The missives have to earn the right to wear clothes. Yes. <laughs> no clothes around me. <laughs> That's hot. That's how I, how the place where I trained is like, submissives were always naked. Um, and I had to like earn my first pair of leather boots, which I thought was very hot. And why, probably why I have such a very strong boot fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like boot, boot and foot stuff translates really nicely to online work I've been doing some like more like one-on-one -on -one Skype shows with submissives and I had a really hot one the other day where I just like had all of my boots next to me and like talking about how stinky they were making my feet and he was wearing his boots and like I like made him eat come off of his boot I think that's something that's really hot is Yes. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yes, man, boy. Either mine or yours, <laughs> or both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I definitely experienced that. I was in uh, MAL last year, and um, I guess my Instagram has started to get some like sort of traction. So people, I went this. I went, this was my second time. The first time nobody knew me. So my experience was pretty like of a voyeur. This time I was like a voyeur and a bit of an exhibitionist. So that showed like a little bit of growth in me with community wise. Yeah. Um, so like I had this one guy come and I guess he was, you know, doing his thing down there. And my roommate was like there and he didn't mind doing it in front of my roommate. And then uh, I guess he came a little bit too early and I was like, um, I'm about to go back downstairs. I can't walk around with my boots like that. You gotta lick that up. <laughs> he definitely licked it up. Oh man, that was hot. My, my roommate was like, I'm jealous. <laughs> You're like, I'm you like, can lick it too. Can too. <laughs> You could do I, it too. I like that too out of like pure practicality is really hot. Like it, when it like comes out of fantasy, like it's, it can be really hot, but like, if you're going to come, you're going to have to lick it off my boot. But what you just said there, like, I have to fucking go downstairs, clean off my boot. It's really right. Hot. Yeah. Like, like I can't go down there with a messy boot. It's right. It. But you got to make it their fault. They love that. Yeah. Look at you. Are you doing some macrame now? <laughs> no, I'm um, trying to wind up these cords from the g video game. So today I went to go pick up uh, some new controllers for my Xbox because I keep on playing like I'm boxing. Because <laughs> you know, you get a little frustrated playing the game and you get beat or whatever. So I hit the buttons a little bit too hard. So 
uh and the buttons got sticky probably because i spilled like juice on it or something <laughs> just, whatever they're always like on the floor so i, had to I like, get some I like fetish and video games is something but I fetish wild video yes games. yes it's like lay under my feet i'm gonna play this game right just lay there i also like i love the emitting heat from the face the nostrils and the mouth mm -hmm. On the bottoms of my feet, I love that. That yes. feeling is amazing. Yes. You clearly have it. a foot fetish. I do. <laughs> I really do. That's what I've missed most about sessions. Um, I had um, the closest I've gotten to a foot fetish session in the pandemic was a gentleman who was obsessed with my feet um, drove three hours for a cash drop and I put my feet in his face for 30 seconds and he drove three hours back. And I was like, that was really hot. I that also, was dedication. That, I know. And I was like, that was dedication to my feet. That is a <laughs> foot fetish. Oh, you man. Six hours round trip to throw cash at me and get the chance to take off one of my boots. <laughs> <laughs> for 30 seconds. Yes. That is Not even 60 romance. seconds, 30. The peak of romance, if you ask me. That's serious. He probably went home and yep. jacked off for days. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was like really fun. It was really charged, and like I I'm he talked a little bit about like what the drive there felt like for him and what the drive back felt like. But I'm excited for when we're doing like our full foot fetish session. And like I just I love foot fetishists so much. I know a lot of like some of my friends are like oh like not not my thing, but I'm like when you get a good one, they are so good because they're, it's like also like, they're so easy to please and like you can use that as a, a form of control and like reward. It's just like, they, I've been training a dog. So I feel like I'm like, this is your high value reward is my feet. <laughs> so right. like, how are you going to earn this? Shout out to Frankie. Yes. My, he, he's trying to be a good boy. He's trying to be a that's good, good boy. That's good, that's good, that's good. I hear you have a puppy too. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so uh, again, the same situation. I met this guy off of a, a dating app and I tapped him first to like start a conversation, but then I didn't hear back for like a week or two. And then uh, just randomly last week, he wrote me back. He was like, oh my God. I'm like, dude, I tapped you like a week ago. You just now get it back to me. And so we communicated, he came over. He was only supposed to stay over for an hour, right? So I pushed it a little bit. I was like, you're gonna stay here 24 hours in bondage. Ooh. So I wrapped the bondage belt around him. Like a dream first date. <laughs> yes, for real. For him, he was he was dying. And, but that's what made me keep him though. After I said it, I was jokingly saying it, but you know, you say you jokingly, but then also you're hoping that they agree to yeah. it, right? <laughs> like, it's just a joke. And they're like, oh, and you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he kind of got excited. He was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah. So then I had him like for like maybe two hours, uh, chained up to the, the anchor point here. And uh, I have an anchor point in the ceiling, but then I have one on both opposite ends of the wall at the base. And I had his feet connected to the one in the base and his hands connected to the one at the ceil in the ceiling. And he's just standing there like uh, a piece of living art. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. He had his uh, pup hood on and he's just I standing there wiggling puppy. around, butt naked. <laughs> and I'm like playing video games, watching TV. And he's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> while he's bowed <laughs> it was really cool and then uh my partner came home so i put him down on the floor and then he fell asleep it was just it was oh, so just sweet. easy it was chill that's so sweet i feel like with puppy play and i'm gonna call my dog my dog and puppy play to, to distinguish because people often tell me they have no idea if i'm talking about frankie my dog or <laughs> a human puppy when I talk about it, I'm right. like, it, it's applicable, um, unless it's super sexual and then it's puppy play. Um, right. But I have a working dog. So I have a dog that is a mix of Australian Shepherd, Border Collie and Poodle who like really wants a job and like really wants to work. And so I've gotten really into dog training. So when I do puppy play, 
I really like playing with puppies who are eager to please and less so like the bratty ones who are trying to like get away with bad things. Um, so I like a working puppy who wants to like learn tricks and like play with my e-collar um, right. and like be a good puppy for mistress. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll show e you. E-collar. <laughs> E collar. Yeah. yeah, we're looking for him for a hood right now. Um, yeah, so I got online. It, it just inspired me, right? He just really came out of the blue. I think like um, fate just has this way of like putting me in the right place at the right time. So I just got to really not push things or try to force things. Like I had to learn that with the rope too, like not to force things because sometimes you're just not ready for this or you're not there just yet, you know, and it'll come to you. So I've been like fantasizing about having a pup, but didn't really know how to go about like getting one. And then once I got one, how do you train them? So we just sitting there for the second day, he came back over the next day. He's like, I hope it's not too much. I'm like, no, come back over. We're going to spend more time. We're going to get well acclimated with each other. I'm going to learn you. You're going to learn me, yeah. all this good stuff. So I just got on the computer. I'm like human puppy training right there smack dab um pup handler northwest northeast put up this puppy training thing and he's like pup, training a pup a human pup is no different from training the actual puppy you just make sure that you're given one word commands and make sure that you know exactly what you want in said command yeah. i'm just like is that simple is. and then pup looks at me he's like you never had a dog before I was like, yeah, but I, I never did like the training and I, know, I really I used to talk to my dog like I'm talking to her. Yeah, my um, my submissive uh, always tells me um, that she gets super turned on when I'm training the dog and she can just hear she's like, I like short authoritative words. And she's like, I hear you training Frankie. And I'm like, hmm, and I'm like, I do. Talk, I'll talk to you that way. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, but but I realized, okay, I, I don't consider myself an elitist, but there's a standard of what I want in a slave, a submissive, and a submissive. I mean, a sub slave, a submissive, and a pup, and right. so on and so forth, right? Um, I don't knock anybody else's standard. Maybe it's a little less of an expectation, because I know I talk to some people, and that's what Instagram is beautiful for, too. I get to gauge what the community is like kind of outside of what as doms we tend to like stay to ourselves and kind of make our own ways and we stay in that lane right so like really no that makes no dom similar to the next one but it also doesn't build like some sort of standard expectation when submissives come into the community because no dom is the same right um but I definitely have a standard. And I think that little things like that show that there's a standard there that I like. So we start talking and I'm saying about the one word command thing. And he's like, whoop, whoop, and starts wagging his tail. He's like, I like one word commands. I'm Aww. like, he got hella excited out of nowhere. I was just like, okay. That was a good bark, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how he sounds. <laughs> He He's been barking like all day. A little Rottweiler or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm imagining like. Okay, because the the hood that we're looking for. So he wants a. He says he's a little tiny dog. Oh, I'm just so off. <laughs> and like furry, and but the hood that I chose was like a Rottweiler one. I chose it basically because it's got like a little lace up bondage thing in the back, and I really like lace up stuff. And, but it has like a brown and black uh, Rottweiler face, mm -hmm. and I think it's really cute, and it'll look good in the dungeon. Yeah, pup puppies are so. Oh, uh, but he's like, I'm not really a Rottweiler. <laughs> I'm a little tiny furry pup. And I'm like, okay. But he's got the bark, bark like. Right, I'm like, it. but you can, and then he says, um, but I can make a big bark, <laughs> and then he makes a big bark, and he's like, maybe I got to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. That's so sweet. Yeah, well, it's, it's exciting. Like a little... it's, it's, a, it's a different sort of dynamic and it kind of feeds into my multi-personality uh, thing going on. Yeah. 
That's so exciting. Well, I hope you continue to have fun training your pup and playing with your rope bunny. They, they sound lovely. I'm definitely going to be coming to you for some training tips. <laughs> I, I do have dog training tips. I, I'll show you how to use the e-collar because I use it as a, like, not as a shock. I use it as an attention grabbing stimulus. So they also like um, do similar things in military training as well for like attention and awareness of mm -hmm. just like a tap. So he's trained for like, this is my dog dog for long distance off leash training, but I really want to take the, and so his attention is just on me. And it's like this very romantic practice where it's like when he had, I had to um, do some, uh, he learned some bad behaviors and wasn't handled properly as a puppy before I had him. So I had to socialize him a lot. And so one of the things that I did is I was put his back against like a skating rink and he wasn't when people were like banging into it he wasn't allowed to look anywhere but right into my eyes and it was like no like I give you safety is like what I was trying to teach him is like you look to me when you're scared so you don't go and make a bad decision um like hurting a toddler running off or yeah he wants to chase, chase toddlers is his <laughs> greatest desire um not not bite them just like herd them like sheep um but I was like doing this training with him and I'm like wow like this is weirdly romantic training and I really want to like the this was my before pandemic goal is to like put the collar on a submissive and take them to the strip club and be like you don't get to look at anyone but me and just like giving their money to the dancers and being like no only look at me it will go up if you take your eyes off I know there's this is a high distraction environment right. but like, you only get to look at me and my feet <laughs> um so it's transferable skills <laughs> transferable yes skills. it is sure. the I love that. <laughs> I love that. I I train Frankie on um, the dog dog on my Instagram sometimes. And a lot of Dom's watch and they're like, oh my God, this is so amazing. It's like totally a skill that can be uh, applied. I wish I actually had more dog training skills before becoming a Dom. Cause it's all about like boundaries and communication and the relationship that you're developing. And I feel like it's- right. It's very useful. Yeah, I, I can imagine. You should follow some dog trainers. I'll send you some dog trainers to follow. Oh, me. yes, please, 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 <laughs> please, 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 please. I'm open to all information. <laughs> and I'm open to all going in all different directions because like you said, I always find a way to make the information transferable. Yeah, I think that's such a good skill to have. Like now I'm even like tying my shoelaces differently. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm uh, like trying to tie my shoelaces differently. I'm like lacing up everything nowadays. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, it was so lovely to chat with you. Um, if oh folks my God, wanna... it's over already? Oh yeah. Well, I, I have to run in a couple of minutes. No, I would, I'm, I'm, joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. Um, but where can where can folks find you if they want to if they want to chat? Um, okay, so I'm on Twitter, Malice of New York. Um, of NY. Um, I'm on Instagram, Malice of NY. Um, you can always email me, Sir Malice Christian at gmail.com. Pretty simple, Sir Malice Christian at gmail.com. Um, and I Is have a Facebook. Only fans or any fan sites? Oh, I have OnlyFans and I have um, Just for Fans. Awesome. Um, I think I have an AVN, but I haven't really put anything on there yet. Um, so I'm going to work on that. There you go. Yeah. Um, but uh, Malice of New York on Malice of NY on OnlyFans and Just for Fans is Malice of New York. You can spell it out. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Well, it was so lovely chatting with you. I'm excited when we can share space again in person. Yes, likewise. Oh my God, I remember the day I met you. I got <laughs> up on stage and I didn't bring my uh, implement. At the and then you just was like, hey, I was like, whoa, okay. It was like, it was a moment. It really was a moment, but you know, you can't react in that moment. You got to still like stay focused. <laughs> okay, so I know like, this is a fun meeting story on, on the stage of a yes. community leather event. Very fun. Yes, but I had seen you at the Whitney, but we never got to like actually yeah, exchange words. I was familiar with you as well, but I don't think we had like spoken or like right. shared more space than just like passing. She's so. just like over there like whoosh, whoosh. 
I was whipping people in the Whitney Museum of yes. Art. I like, I'm gonna put that on my fucking resume. <laughs> Exhibit whipping bitches <laughs> into shape. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much.